Monday, the New York Times published a joint opinion piece by a cross-partisan group of quote-unquote thinkers that included uh, Camille Foster, David French, Jason Stanley, and Thomas Chatterton Williams. The title of the piece, well, that depends on when you access the article, originally titled Anti-Critical Race Theory Laws Are Un-American. The piece is now we disagree on a lot of things except the danger of anti-critical race theory laws. Now, together, the group claims laws barring the divisive teaching of CRT, quote, threaten the basic purpose of a historical education in a liberal democracy, end quote. Well, do they? Here to help us answer that question and more is Stanley Kurtz, Senior Fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Stanley, welcome back to the program. Tony, thanks so much for having me. Hey, b before we jump into this, which you've written a piece to, and I've got posted on my website, TonyPerkins.com, yesterday the NEA, uh, after last week having passed a number of measures promoting critical race theory and what they were going to do in teaching it in the 14,000 school districts across America, all of a sudden they disappeared from their website. What's going on there? It's really amazing, Tony. Uh, you know, for some time, the, uh, the left has said, oh, we don't teach critical race theory. That's an abstruse legal theory, and it's really not involved in the schools at all. And that, that argument was destroyed when the teachers, the biggest teachers union in the country, the National Education Association passed a resolution saying, we plan to teach critical race theory. Uh, and so <laughs> when, when conservatives and opponents of critical race theory realized this, uh, they publicized it, they mentioned that the arguments up to now have been totally contradicted and now the NEA took took it off the site, well, it's too late. The cat is out of the bag. They are in favor of critical race theory. So now we know what we're up against, uh, but there are some, I don't know that I would call them conservative allies, libertarian allies maybe, uh, that are critical of some of the efforts you've been behind and certainly what we've been promoting, and that is parents getting involved, legislators getting involved, stopping this nonsense uh, that is masquerading as education, which is nothing more than indoctrination. Absolutely, Tony. And I think that op-ed in the New York Times was really off base, certainly to use phrases like un-American. And you have people here, some of them actually, this one, one fellow, Jason Stanley, is a leftist who really attacks free speech. So it was quite extraordinary to have him on the article. But other, other authors of that article have been focused on campus free speech. But what I think they miss is there is a fundamental difference between K-12 and higher education. Uh, people, uh, children uh, in K-12 are not mature adults. They are not in a position to hear a variety of points of view in different courses that they take and make an independent decision. As younger people, they are vulnerable to uh, the impressions made on them by their teachers. Not only that, but K-12 is something that you are compelled to attend. Of course, if the uh, family can shoulder a very significant financial burden, they have the option of going to private school. But a, 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 as a first resort, the government forces you to go to K-12. So the, these children are a captive audience. They are children, and now they have to hear people telling them that they should feel bad about the color of their skin, that they're privileged and even responsible for all of the past errors that anyone of their skin color happened to make 100 or 150 years ago. This is outrageous. And it is not something that falls into the category of free speech as it would in a college classroom. Again, because of the compulsion and because of the maturity, it is entirely proper. And the law, the, this op-ed acted as though the legality of this K-12 legislation was some kind of minor detail. But the fact that you are able to legislate what is taught in government-run schools is part of a very important principle. K-12 is rightly responsive in the classroom to democratic decision making. That's not the case with higher ed classroom, and that distinction is very important. 
Well, Stanley, it reminds me of how the left was pushing back, you know, 40, 50 years ago, saying, well, we can't have prayer, we can't have the Ten Commandments in our schools because kids are so impressionable. Uh, you know, we don't want people imposing religion on them because they're impressionable. I mean, isn't that what they're doing right now with this CRT and with all this nonsense coming out of the 1619 Project? Absolutely, Tony. And another problem with this op-ed was they said, well, instead of these laws, what you need to do is file lawsuits because, in fact, these, uh, the CRT is uh, a civil rights violation. Well, first of all, that admits that CRT is a fundamental violation of American uh, principles of equality and rights. That's quite an admission. And secondly, we've now had three decades of lawsuits trying to fix these uh, campus uh, speech codes and speech zones. And you know what? Uh, we always win when we take them to court, but somehow the colleges find ways to keep them there. So you have these young impressionable students are gonna be subject to being told that there's something wrong with their skin color. And maybe if we're lucky, three decades later, the problem will be fixed. I'm, I'm right. sorry, but that's not acceptable. Uh, you hear that music, we're out of time, but very quickly, you've been on this from the start with the critical race theory. Are people catching on to what's happening in the schools and getting engaged? Absolutely, Tony. And I think next year we're going to see a wave of further state legislation. Now, I do have model legislation that I think saw, the one thing about this op-ed was it pointed to some technical problems in some of the bills, which are legitimate. And I, I don't think that my model legislation is subject to that. And uh, more and more states are picking up that. Also, we've got this problem with action civics, where they force the kids to protest. And, and uh, my model can solve that as well. All right. You got to leave it there. Stay